Welcome everyone. We appreciate you being here tonight on this cold, chilly night. We appreciate you coming out. We know that this is a big deal. This is a big deal for you as parents to be here talking about um, your, your student entering into the Career Center and making that transition and that leap. So that's why we kind of wanted to pull together our first ever meeting in regards to um, talking to parents, just helping them understand and answering a lot of those, what I call FAQs, frequently asked questions, about coming to the Career Center and what does that look like and how does that feel? And so we're gonna get into a lot of questions tonight that I'm sure that you're all just, just um, swirling around in your head wondering um, lots of different things. I see a lot of people still coming in, but that's okay. Just take a seat wherever you'd like. Make sure you get a folder. Hopefully you did pick up a folder when you walked in. Somebody gave you a folder along with an index card, okay? As the um, night, we'll be here for about an hour, but as you think of questions tonight, make sure you jot them down on the index card and then we will be collecting those throughout the program so that we can be sure to address any questions that you may have. We may not get to all of them. A lot of your questions will probably be answered tonight as we go through some different things, but I wanna make sure if you do have questions, we'll get them addressed either through an email or on our website. We'll post some different things about frequently asked questions. Okay, before we get into a lot of the FAA uh, frequently asked questions, I want Dr. Miller to kick us off here to share with us the school's vision, mission, values, and the strategic plan. Um, welcome, and if you're standing in the back, there are some additional chairs up here. Don't feel shy about coming up, and we also are getting some chairs out back here, so we'll get you some seats uh, so you don't have to stand the entire time. Um, again, I'm Kim Miller. I'm the superintendent here at Eastland Fairfield Career and Technical Schools. I'm very excited to welcome you um, to this um, informational session. We hope that we'll answer a lot of questions. I want you to know that many of the uh, topics that we'll be discussing tonight were shared from my parent advisory group when I asked them, so what would you have liked to have known before your students came here? Mem many of the topics they suggested. So this is really very much driven by parents and guardians, so hopefully this will be help helpful to you. But I'm here to talk a little bit about the direction of Eastland Fairfield. You know, back in your K-12 district, you've maybe been there for a while, you have a sense of the direction of the district and the culture and the philosophy, and now you're coming to a whole new place, and I wanna make sure that you understand what we're about and the direction that we're trying to go. So last year uh, in May, we kicked off a, the strategic planning process. I have, um, came over to Eastland Fairfield last October, became the superintendent in um, January of 2021, and talked with the Board of Education about our, our direction. And so in May, we kicked off the strategic planning process. And we utilized the services of a consulting firm called Rice Educational Consulting. And they really took us through a very thorough process. We had surveys and we also held focus groups. We talked to students, we talked to parents and guardians, we talked to our associate schools, uh, which would be your home schools. We talked to our business partners, we talked to alumni, and we talked to our staff to get input about what we do well at Eastland Fairfield and the direction that we wanna go in the future. And so that's how we arrived at our strategic plan. So we, um, as part of the process, we ask all of those stakeholders, do you know what our vision, mission, and values are, and do they hold true still? And so many of the things that we had in place, people said, yes, that works, but there were some tweaks that needed to be made. So we've updated our vision. Our vision, which is what we aspire to do for our students, is to prepare and guide each student to pursue success through exceptional educational experiences. We want the experiences that your children have when they're here to not just be good, to not just prepare them for careers or additional education or enlistment, but we want to make sure that the experience is an exceptional our mission, that's our daily work. What do we do each and every day? We want to engage, enrich, and equip students every day in every experience. Education, learning is an experience. It's not an event, it's an experience that takes place over time. And we want our students to have that experience in everything they do, whether it's in the welding lab, the pre-nursing lab, the animal management lab, English class, in a career tech student organization, or even just in the lunchroom with other friends. We want every experience 
to be one that really helps develop our young people. And then our values. We made one tweak to our values. The values that we had pretty much uh, rang true for people. But our values are relationships. Everything we do in education is built on relationships with our students, with our staff, with you, our parents and guardians and family members. We want to build a positive relationship with you. Innovation. As a career technical school, we are designed to be innovative. We are charged with offering programming that is in demand in our, in our communities, okay. in the workforce. And so we have to be innovative. We have to be able to change and develop new ways of doing things. Passion for learning. We're educators. We love to learn. And we want our students to love to learn as well. And then finally, accountability. Accountability is a really important topic to me. The administrators will tell you that I talk about accountability quite a bit. We need to be accountable to our students for what we said we would do, to you, our parents and guardians. You are also taxpayers. We are supported by tax, tax dollars just like your home district, and you, as taxpayers in your home district, are helping to support us. That's how I won't give you a finance lesson unless you want to talk to me afterwards. Um, but we need to be accountable to what you send to us to offer these programs. We also need to be accountable to the state, to, the, the, to our business partners, to our, our associate schools as well. And so accountability is a very important component of, of what we do here. Our strategic plan is organized around what, what we call pillars. So there are four pillars to our strategic plan. The first one is enhancing culture and climate. We want to create a school culture where each and every student feels welcome and valued each and every day and every experience. That is important for us. And, and Mr. Dwight Carter is going to talk a little bit more about what we're doing in that realm to create that kind of culture. Our second pillar is ensuring programming and operational excellence. I talked about innovation and accountability. We need to ensure that we are offering the programs that will lead to a meaningful future for your child, whether they take what they learn here again into the military or straight to work or on to additional education, we want to make sure that what we're offering is what's in demand and of interest to our students. One of the great things about Career Tech is we have the ability to add additional programming. One of the downsides is sometimes we have to eliminate programming if it's no longer in need. But that's what we're charged with is being very um, responsive to the needs of our communities. Our third pillar is fostering communications and relationships. I already talked about the value of relationships. Um, you, you were introduced to Ryan Gasser here. He's our uh, coordinator of communications and marketing. Um, w this is probably, when you look, if you were to look at the details of our strategic plan, there is more work to do in this area than any of the others. Because again, everything that we do is built on relationships. So you'll be getting newsletters from us on a biweekly basis. You'll be getting newsletters from your school. We want to make sure that we are engaging you in what's happening here. You are welcome here, and we want you to be a part of what we're doing. And this is also our associate schools. So one of the things we'll talk about is, can I still be on the track team? Can I still be in the plays back at my home school? Absolutely. And so we work really hard to build relationships with our home schools so that students can have the best experience um, in both places. So that's an important component of what we do. And the fourth pillar of our strategic plan is maximizing instructional effectiveness. Um, you're going to hear from Shelly Groves, our assistant superintendent. She oversees all of our curriculum and instructional programming. Again, we want the experiences in the classroom to be those that engage your student, enrich your student, and equip your student. Um, we have a cohort of teachers that are working on inquiry-based learning, um, which is sort of a real-world problem-solving approach to learning. That's what we do naturally in our career technical programs. So again, if you're in interactive media, you're creating and you're working on developing websites and, and media and video. If you are in pre-nursing, you are hands-on with patients. Now, most of them, at the, for the most part of the year, are not actual patients. They're, they're uh, dolls and dummies and whatever. I'm not sure exactly what the mannequins. Thank you. <laughs> mannequins. If you're in pre-dental, there's some interesting heads that are in the pre-dental lab to learn. But eventually, our students will work with real, real patients and real people. And we want that, ex that experience is very hands-on. We want our academic classes to have that same philosophy. So when I go from that uh, auto technologies lab 
over to my English class, I'm still getting a real world problem solving approach, which is much more engaging for students. And so that's a commitment that we're making. We have work to do in this area, but it is, which is why it's in the strategic plan, but it is definitely a commitment that we're making to you and to your students. And then our why. The reason that we're here is to help students find their next E, and you're going to learn more about that. We are here for students. We are educators and we've chosen this profession because we care deeply about helping our young people learn and figure out what they want to do next in life. Not what they will do for the rest of their lives, but just what is next. I have had 10 jobs in my professional career, all different, all in education, but 10 different positions in my professional career. And so we know that we are not going putting students into the very, you know, the rest of their lives, but just the start. And um, they are our why, they are why we are here. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Teresa Durkin. I look forward to meeting you. Um, if you have ideas about things we can do here, please feel, to, feel free to email me or, or give me a call. I'd love to talk with you. And again, I'd love to meet you. And thank you for being here. Thank you, Dr. Miller. And thank you for our leadership in this district. We appreciate that. You know, Dr. Miller talked about our pillar of enhancing culture and climate and the importance of nurturing an inclusive culture for our diverse student population. I've asked Mr. Carter to be here tonight to kind of address and help us understand why is diversity so important to us and how we embrace that. So Mr. Carter. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming out. As uh, Mrs. Durkin said, um, my, my position is called the Director of Student Support Systems, which is a very fancy name that says anything with an acronym in education I oversee. So it's pretty broad. Uh, it's a new position, so we're building it as we go along. But ultimately, what we came up with this position because we saw some needs. As Dr. Miller came in and did some assessments and talked to all the staff, um, talked to uh, leadership team, but also uh, teachers, uh, she identified some gaps that we had. And we also had some experiences that showed that we had some gaps. So to fill those gaps, this position was created to make sure that we are putting all the systems in place for every student to be successful. And that success could look different. It's not just straight A's. It's as a student being successful in terms of the experience that they're having in our district at Eastland Fairfield Career and Technical Schools. So that impact looks like a number of uh, programs that are all focused on the school climate and the school culture. Culture are the norms, beliefs, beha uh, behaviors, and, and traditions that exist in the school. The climate is how the school feels the moment you walk in the door. Climate and culture are hugely important to the success of students and, and, and teachers. A part of that is understanding how to support students in their mental health and wellness by focusing on social emotional learning. Social emotional learning basically helps us to guide students to becoming more self-aware. So understanding who they are as a, as, a, as a young adult, how are they evolving as a young adult. It also helps them to become much more socially aware so they're aware of their surroundings, aware of other people, and how their, their personality and their behavior in, interacts and impacts other people. Then we also look at, look at their, um, their self-management. Are they able to work through problems and, and show grit and perseverance? Those, those skills are highly uh, necessary in today's work world, in today's world period. Because stress is not decreasing, we have to help everybody, help our students um, manage the stress that they're, that they're under. And then finally, a part of that is um, relationship skills. Well, that's one of our pillars, so we want to help students have a better understanding of how to connect and, and con um, communicate and work with people who aren't just like them, because our world is much more diverse. We also look at uh, special education. Some of your students may have a, uh, be a student with an indiv individual education plan. We provide those services as well. We have a supp great support team of Vicki Huey here at Eastland Career Center and Ashley Miller at Fairfield Career Center. So you may, you'll have some conversations with them uh, here in the next couple weeks and months. We also have systems in place to focus on how do we celebrate the behavior that we want to see. And that's through positive behavior and, and intervention uh, supports. And then finally, again, as our world is expanding and growing and changing, we have an emphasis on diversity, equity, inclusion. And when we think about diversity, it's not just what you see outwardly. That's, that's the um, identity diversity. That's hugely important, but we can't stop there. We have also looked at the cognitive diversity that exists. And that simply means where two or more people exist, there's diversity. So with the cognitive diversity, 
can click it, and the identity diversity, we are celebrating and recognizing the vastness of our district. Our district is 700 square miles, and we serve 16 districts, 17 high schools. And each of those high schools look completely different. So your student has made a major adult decision in their lives. They have chosen, with your support and encouragement, to leave their home school for two years, to come to a school they haven't been to, to connect with students they don't know from 16 di different districts. So instead of um, seeing that as a challenge, we see that as a huge opportunity because we're a microcosm of what the state looks like and what our, what our country looks like now. So with that diversity, we wanna make sure that we focus on what is equitable. And equity simply means accepting each student for who they are as they are and giving each student what they need to be successful where they're starting from. E equality is giving everybody the same thing at the same time. Not everybody's starting at the same place, not everybody's coming with the same skill set, not everybody's coming with the same advantages. So we focus on equity and then inclusion simply means creating an environment where each student feels that they are seen, heard, validated, and treated fairly. Seen, heard, validated, and tre treated fairly. Now those are aspirational things that we're working on, so we have some programs in place and some coaching and, and, and um, cohorts that we have in place. And so as we focus on providing the supports that students need, helping them with their social emotional learning, um, their academic supports through, again, some of the things we mentioned, we wanna help them get to their next E, as Dr. Miller talked about. Their next E is the next step after high school, which could be furthering, furthering education. It could be a two-year college, it could be a four-year university, it could be continuing education in their lab, or it could be enlistment in the military. We have several students who enlist in all four branches of the military. That's something we highly support and encourage, and there's some opportunities to learn more about the military while they're here. The third E is employment. Through work-based learning, which you'll hear from uh, Mrs. Pontius, students will be able to um, become employed through internships and jobs their senior year and that could further lead to employment after graduation. And then the last E is entrepreneurship. Some of our students have businesses that are thriving right now, so we wanna make sure we provide the skills and the, and the necessary resources and support to help students get the knowledge to launch a business either right after high school or further down the line. So if they can um, do one of those four things, then, then we're be, we've been successful and you'll, you'll feel that success, and it's the next E, not the only E the next E. So with that, I want to turn it back over to Mrs. Durkin. Thanks, Mr. Carter. We love, as Mr. Carter said, we love talking about the E's here at Eastland and Fairfield. And you'll often hear us referring to what's your E and helping students find their E. Okay, parents, guardians, I'm sure you're probably wondering what kind of academics do we offer here at Eastland and Fairfield Career and Technical Schools? Will my students still get the same math and English and science and social study classes? And what about that CCP? Will they have that opportunity, the CCP? Hopefully you understand. And, but I'm Mrs. Groves, our assistant superintendent here, she's going to speak to us um, and talk to us about the academic offerings. And there's actually something in your folder about the academic offerings. Um, so I will turn it over to Mrs. Groves. Well, good evening. Thank you for coming out. I don't know about you, but when I stepped out my door this morning and saw that little dusting of snow, I thought, boy, this really stinks. But it's okay. <laughs> Thank you for coming out this evening. And I do get the privilege of talking about everyone's favorite subject, which is the academic coursework that you will be taking here at Eastland Fairfield. As Dr. Miller said, we are really working to make sure that we are very much a project-based, inquiry-based um, school. Everything we do from science, English language arts, to math, which is what I love and hold very dear to my heart, we want it all to be inquiry-based. We want students to think and wonder and problem solve. That's our goal. That's what they're doing in labs. We're just trying to extend that now to our academics. Opportunities that I am asked about all the time that you have at your home school now, you still have those opportunities at Eastland Fairfield. But before we get into that, I do want to explain a couple of things. I know there's been a little bit of confusion, and COVID has caused a little bit of confusion. 
being a career tech school, we are very much hands-on. And let me give you an example. Um, when we got, some of the schools were closed down um, about a year ago, we were not able to fully close down. Did we do some modifications? Absolutely. Our first priority was safety, safety and the health of our students and our staff. However, if I'm a cosmetology student and the expectation is that I'm going to be leaving Easton Fairfield and I'm setting for a State Board of Cosmetology assessment, there are some things that I have to put my hands on and I've got to be able to do. So we were able to do a little bit of remote or online learning, but I will tell you, we were rotating. Again, we followed all of the mandates, but students were here able to get their hands on, on some items and, and do different things in their labs and their academics. Since we are a career and tech school, we do not have online academics or online courses. That's been a little, a little point of confusion, so I just wanna make sure everyone is aware. We are, when you're at Eastland Fairfield, we are, we're all in. We are face-to-face, -face, all in. We don't have those online academic options. Like some schools, I know they have a virtual school um, or virtual classes that you can take. We are all in, okay? So that's number one. Number two, we are very much workforce development. And as Mr. Carter said, um, and I think everyone that's, that spoke so far, Dr. Miller and, and uh, Mr. Carter, thank you for being here. You've taken a huge step personally, and I will say professionally, because when you enroll in Eastland Fairfield, you are in workforce development. That means you've said, you know what, I, I, I've tried it, and I know what this is, and I'm not just exploring anymore. I'm ready to take the deep dive into the big kid pool, and that's where I want to be. So we specialize in workforce development. So kudos to you, for you, your student. Kudos to you for making that decision. That's a, that's a very mature decision, and we are so excited to partner with you on that. So academics. Any academic class, math, English language arts, social studies, science, we have all of that here. We do have some, um, we are looking at reformatting to offer some more opportunities for students. I'm not gonna get into the deep weeds there, but I think we're gonna be doing some unique things that students will be, really be excited about. It will give students voice in the classes that they're able to take and some more choices to open up their scheduling and have opportunities like work-based learning. A lot of questions about college credit, so let's just jump right to it, okay? Let's get there. College Credit Plus. How many people already know what College Credit Plus is? Go ahead, raise your hand. Every, okay, pretty much everyone in here. College Credit Plus, you set for the assessment, the entrance exam, the student takes the entrance exam, or it's based off their ACT scores. Then they're enrolled through the college to take that particular course. Then they get college transcripted credit from that college. They've got a transcript that goes with them. They've done that credit is theirs, okay? That's the traditional. We do have traditional CCP courses, College Credit Plus courses in math, English language arts, science, we have anatomy and physiology. We're looking at expanding that and we're looking at potentially, possibly, offering some social studies, okay? But not only do we have College Credit Plus, the cool thing about career and technical education there are two other opportunities that students have to earn college credit. And these are wonderful opportunities, so I wanna make sure you understand them. CCP is the traditional, yeah, you got that. The other two, okay? Which one do I have next? Articulated credit. Bilateral articulated credit. Every year I get to work with our post-secondary partners. And the first thing I do is I take a look at where are students going to school? If they are continuing in education, which is one of our E's, where are they going? What are they studying? And is there a way that we can partner with that post-secondary partner to get some college credits? For example, we have a lot of pre-nursing students. If they're, if they're going on to education and enrollment, they go to Columbus State, or they go to Hawking, or they go to COTC. Those are three of our really big partners. So I send all of our coursework over to COTC, Hawking, and Columbus State. And they come back and say, okay, if you have a student that completes that pre-nursing program, they see it all the way to the end, junior and senior year, we will award them so many credits. And I think 
The most we have is about 16 credits that a student can earn, which I think is pretty good, okay? But completing the program, Hawking College, let's say just for an example, these are not written in stone, I'm just giving you an example, okay? So don't come back and say, Mrs. Grove said I'm gonna get 25 credits for pre-nursing at Hawking College, no, no. So let's say Hawking College said, if a, pre, if a student in pre-nursing completes the program, the full two years, we will award them these 12 credits. That means the student, that pre-nursing student, as soon as they enroll in Hawking College and take a class, those credits are populated onto their transcript. A little different than, CC, than College Credit Plus, that CCP, you have to attend that college to get that college credit. That's an articulated credit, okay? Then we have CTAG credits. CTAG credits are statewide articulated credits, meaning if your student completes a program and they go to a particular college and that college offers a program similar to the career tech program you took, there are credits that will go directly with that student and they can get that college credit that way. It's a statewide articulation, okay? If they don't offer the program, they can't give you that credit. And there are only certain programs, certain courses within that program that fall under this category. So students in career technical education have some really incredible opportunities above and beyond a traditional high school to earn some college credit. Okay, so I can't say enough how excited we are to have your student and you here at Eastland Fairfield, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Mrs. Groves. So I know there's probably still a <clears throat> lot of nuts and bolts questions swirling around in your mind, <laughs> and hopefully we'll get some of those answers here next with um, our acting principal, Mr. Joey Gates, and um, Mr. Matt McGregor. Um, the principal at Fairfield Career Center. So, Mr. Gates and Mr. McGregor, could you kind of talk to us about uh -oh. the daily bell schedule? Like, what does that look like? Or the calendar, and how does attendance work, and lunch? What about busing? So all of those nuts and bolts things, can you cover that for us? Yeah, we're, we're kind of like the hardware store now, I guess. <laughs> right, we're gonna be covering the nuts and bolts here. Um, we recognize there's a lot of excitement and a lot of enthusiasm, hopefully for coming here and being accepted and all of that. There's probably some nerves as well because this is different, this is new, there's things that are, gonna, that are different here than maybe what the school that you're coming from. A lot of that is going to take some time to get used to, but we thought we'd lay out some of those items tonight to help maybe ease some of that anxiety or nerves that you may have. You're a student at the school that you're coming to us from. You're still a student. You will stay a student at that school. We partner with those districts, and we heard that mentioned earlier. Um, we partner with those schools. So while you're a student at Gehanna or another school that, that feeds into us, you are also a student attending school here, of course. We encourage you to stay connected with those home schools. Follow their calendars, follow their events, participate in their activities, whether it's extracurricular, whether it's sporting, band, uh, the list goes on, of course. Um, we work with their schedules to provide opportunities to attend uh, events at their schools, pep rallies, if they have guest speakers, things like that. So we don't want this to feel like you're totally leaving that school as you come to us. Physically, you may be on a day-to-day -day basis. However, stay connected with that school. We encourage that. Um, as we look at the bell schedule itself, um, we run, as you can tell, a nine period day. <clears throat> Juniors attend lab first thing in the morning. So if you, when you arrive, whether by bus, drop off, or drive, at 8.05, you're in your lab, and as you can tell by the pretty green box there, you're there until about 10.54, okay? Then what happens is we have lunches and academics, and this is where it, it, it seems a little confusing, but obviously your schedule will stay the same each day. So after lab, you will go to an academic class. Seniors will be in lunch, not you. So that fifth period slot is for academic class. Then you will either go to academics again or lunch, if you didn't go to lunch, you get to go the next period, and then you attend academic classes throughout the afternoon. Academics, electives, and those classes. The uh, <laughs> lunches, as you can see, the times are right like they are. We are a closed campus. That's something that we want to make sure we know. We have a, a lot of students that drive. 
Um, you're gonna hear about work-based learning. Students leave campus for other opportunities, but in terms of lunch, we are a closed campus. Um, here at Eastland, we are very fortunate to have a strong culinary program that produces some pretty amazing food. We have the Heritage Room that is open to students. Um, sorry, Mr. McGregor. Um, so we, we don't share that very well, but it is available to Eastland students um, throughout the year, um, and that's something that is an option. As you take steps towards starting school here, we have some other events that are lined up that we encourage you to participate in. Uh, back to school night, that's where you pick up your schedule. It's an opportunity to meet your teacher, see your lab, walk around, um, interact with this building a little bit, um, acclimate yourself, maybe walk through your schedule, do some of those things pretty standard as you go. You've probably done that as a freshman and so on and so forth. You need to familiarize yourself with the building. That's a good opportunity to do that. We also, on August 15th, juniors first day of school it's juniors only so you have the chance again to sort of get to know the building and not have all the um, chaos of it'll be less people less transitions things like that so i would encourage you to um, be prepared for that day that's a good day to ask questions ask for help ask for support um, and we can provide that on a little more uh, individual basis that day our calendar so because of what i said a moment ago as a student that's attending classes here, you will follow our calendar. Our spring break may not line up with the spring break at your home school. Your spring break falls when our spring break does in terms of the days that you don't come to school. Um, and parent-teacher conferences and those kind of things will follow our calendar. So again, while you're tracking your home school calendar, make sure that your priority is our calendar in terms of when to be at class, when the events are here and those kind of things. It's on our website, it's very available. Um, we'll be posting events and newsletters and things like that along the way as well. Reporting and absence, obviously attendance is very important, um, especially with a lab setting, there's a lot of the, that long ongoing instruction and hands-on activities. If you do have to miss school, it's important that you call your student in and you call in and let us know that they are going to be absent so that it can be excused. Um, again, that shouldn't be so different than anywhere else that you've been but again, you're not calling the associate school, you're calling us directly. All right. Calamity days and busing, we don't have transportation. Transportation is provided by each of the 16 districts. So bus riders will get on, a, again, a, a bus from their home school and come here. Um, unfortunately, we don't have anything to do with what time the bus picks you up or what the route is or, or why they didn't show up that day. We're happy to help you with that. But that communication needs to go through the home school, okay? That's, that's, that can be a little confusing. We're happy to help you with that. We've got plenty of ways to contact and get you the right numbers, but the busing is through the associate schools. Also, calamity days. If there is a snow day at your home school, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're having a snow day. All right, I know. I don't know who makes those decisions, but, oh, sorry, she's over here. <laughs> um, the important part of your job, right? <laughs> it's very, the most important. Um, if your home school is closed, the busing will not be provided. However, if you are still able to make it to school, if parents, if you still get permission for your son or daughter to, to, to drive to school, school is still open, they are able to come to school. The calamity day does count as an excused absence if they do not attend. So again, you're following the calamity day for Eastland Fairfield Career Technical Schools, not your home school, to be clear, okay? Um, we know there's a lot more questions. We know there's, this just doesn't cover everything. Mr. McGregor will cover everything else. <laughs> he's prepared, so he's got everything else. Um, do write down in your note card these kind of questions. We understand that these are the things that help provide some peace of mind as you prepare to start your uh, time here at Eastland and Fairfield. Again, I'm, I'm Mr. McGregor. I'm the uh, principal at Fairfield Career Center. So a lot of this stuff is new to me, too. This is my first year. I was an assistant principal at Gehanna last year. So I see some familiar faces. I can't get away from the Dobermans. They follow me <laughs> everywhere. Um, but I did want to, like some of the stuff. So when, when they talk about labs, that's the program that you're in. So if you're in welding, that's your lab. It's also your program. So a lot of terminology here is new. Um, the busing thing. One thing I wanted that I learned is when your district, home district has a calamity day, like a snow day, often they won't send the bus to your home. They have to provide transportation from your high school to our school, but they don't have to provide transportation from your house to, their, to your high school. So that's a sticking point for some kids. 
And when they first told me about it, I'm like, well, why aren't the buses running? And then, you know, you figure out, like, well, it's a snow day for them. So on those days, there weren't that many of them, but it, it can be. And some of the buses run in some districts and some of they don't. And that's the challenge of having 16 districts. But that is that you could be uh, needing a ride from your home to the high school. Now, state law says they have to get you to us, but they don't have to get you from your house to that school. So that is like a, a sticking point for some kids. Um, Chromebooks, we are going one-to-one -one this next year, so for you juniors, you will have uh, a Chromebook uh, assigned to you, and I mean, I'm working on the, the exact details, but you'll, you will get to keep it at the end of it. If you're a senior, if any of the seniors here, that's a, there's a little bit different policy, but for the incoming juniors, you will get a new Chromebook to take home with you, and um, this is our first year for that. A lot, of you, a lot of your districts now have that already, but this is our first year. Um, transportation, we did talk a little bit about this. Um, parking permits, our parking permits now um, are free. You just have to apply for them, you have to show your ID. At Eastland, you guys don't have trouble with too many students applying for, you have enough spots. So at Fairfield, as, as, a district, as a district we're growing, this is the first year at Fairfield that we had more kids apply for spots than we had uh, parking spots available. So. Over the summer, they are building a $1.1 million parking lot at Fairfield, which I had no idea parking lots were so much, but um, <laughs> they're redoing our parking lot and adding 108 spots. So there will be spots for your junior. Now I will tell you that the parking lot will be, the existing parking lot will be done, but it could be like uh, into the fall till the new, new one gets done. But it is coming, so that was a, that was a headache for a lot of students here. We worked with them as much as we could. Um, but there are limits there, but it, it's soon to be remedied. All right, so career tech student organizations. So CTSOs, that's something that you haven't heard before, most likely, unless you've had a sibling come through here. It stands for, well, you'll hear them referred to as CTSOs. Um, every student here that comes here belongs to a CTSO. All right, it's a student organization. There are different ones. Um, some of the big ones, Skills USA, FFA, which is Future Farmers of America, so our animal management and some of the animal related programs uh, belong to that. HOSA, the Health Occupation Students of America, that has to do with pre-nursing, dental, pre-dental, um, anything with health. So what they do, uh, next slide please. The purpose is to enhance student learning through contextual instruction, leadership and personal development, applied learning and real world application. They help guide students in developing a career path, a program of study and provide opportunities and gain the skills and abilities needed to be successful in those careers. So what that means is they provide real world experiences to your student in the lab or program that they're in. So they have competitions, for example. They'll have local competitions, whether in, in, a, in a host of competition, they do health-focused competitions. In the construction, in, if they're in Skills USA, which is like a construction or the trade, um, a lot of the trades belong to Skills USA. They'll literally build things and for a competition. It's local, then they have states, and they have nationals. So it's, it's a competition. If you're in welding, they, they have welding competitions to challenge each other and, sure and to see who can do the best, who has the best skills, who can apply them the best in, the, in a short amount of time. So if you come to our May 5th new student celebration, which is at each school, you can go to your lab, your program, you can look around, you can walk to school, you can talk to the teachers and the staff. You will have in each lab, in each of your programs, they will have uniforms there that you have to wear. We do require uniforms but you can try on the different sizes there to see if you want to make sure that you get the right size. Now, if you order the wrong size and it gets delivered, you will, you can send it back. You just bring it in the office, and, and it happens every year. Well, I've been here one year. It happens <laughs> every year I've been here. I'm sure it happens every year. But you, it, it's not unusual that somebody gets the wrong size, or they order the right size and it comes in wrong. So that's happened too. So. If you aren't able to come to the May 5th, you can order online and more information will be coming to you as we get closer to that time, but you will be able to order it and then um, if it doesn't work, we have uh, ways to go about that. Uh, so that's the two ways. You can try on size it that day or you can order it from home. Okay. And I'll hand it back to Mrs. Durkin.
So um, I alluded earlier and said that we have a great support system here, uh, a great student services team um, that's really here to support students and make them successful. Mrs. Thompson, our counselor at Fairfield Career Center, can you kind of help share some information about like class scheduling? How do they get scheduled and how does that, um, who owns the transcript? Because that's often a question we get asked as well. Like, um, parents or students will call here after they completed the program and say, hey, send me my transcript. So how does that work? And last, I know another question, probably on an index card. As a parent, how do I check on their progress? Like, how do I look at their grades and things? Okay. Um, is this all? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So for the transcript, the transcript comes from your home school. So we'll say home school a lot, which that means your high school. So when I talk to students, I'll say your home school. It doesn't mean that you're home school. It just means that's the high school that you belong to. So if you need something, um, everything, every grade that you get at Fairfield Career Center, Eastland Career Center, goes onto your transcript. We send it to your high school. They add it on. So when you're graduating and you need a copy of your transcript sent to a college or you want it for um, a scholarship purpose or just for your own personal reasons, you have to contact your homeschool counselor. I can also do that for you. You can come to me, I can contact them, and we can get that situated. So that's where the transcript comes from. That's who owns it is your homeschool because that is where you graduate from. You will have a ceremony at Eastland Fairfield, but you also graduate from your homeschool. Um, there's nine periods in a day, and I think they went over that already, and there are four periods that you're in your lab which is your program, and then the other four periods, you're in your academic classes, which is math, English, science, and social studies. Okay, so your, what was your next question? About scheduling, how do they scheduling. get scheduled? Okay, yeah. so if you wanna schedule, we're coming to your high school, next, beginning next week, uh, Mr. Philhauer, Mr. Miller, Mrs. Ferraro, and myself are coming to the high schools to schedule you, um, and we will go over what you need based on your program. So we have a list of students and we will go over your program and you'll tell me, you know, what it is that you're wanting to do and we'll go over the courses that you need, what courses that you've taken. We'll have like your transcript and stuff like that to kind of guide you. Over the summer, we get transcripts. We'll go over those again with a fine tooth comb and audit those and make sure that you have the right courses that you're not missing anything to make sure that you're on track for graduation purposes and we continue to do that throughout the school year so yeah so progress book there's progress book and there's canvas progress book shows attendance the grade cards and your parent and student logins so that's where you'll see the actual report card when we do report cards if you want to see a current grade that's in Canvas. So you're going to have two different sign-ups at the beginning of the school year to have access to Canvas and to have access to Progress Book. Thanks, Mrs. Thompson. Maybe Mrs. Huey, could you just kind of follow that up with some additional supports that we have at both, uh, on both campuses? Okay, well good evening everybody. Um, it's great to see so many people here. I know this is the first time that we've done this, so it's really exciting to have all of you here. I'm going to just kind of talk a little bit about if your student has an IEP 504 or if they receive ELL services um, where English is the second language in your home. So for students on IEPs, we always get a lot of questions of, well, how does that work? You know, my, my students on an IEP at our home school, and so how are the services uh, provided at Eastland as well as Fairfield and we have a team of intervention specialists so they each will have a caseload we try to designate them per lab so they can familiarize themselves with each uh, lab program as well to provide supports um, <clears throat> and they will have their caseload we will conduct all the meetings here we invite the district rep from our home associate schools to attend as well because we're working as a team. You get the best of both worlds. You get your home school as well as you get your uh, career tech school. So uh, we, we like to all collaborate and make sure that we are providing the needs um, that are, are possible. So 
all the IEP meetings. And the great thing, I guess one of the only things that came out of COVID that was really great is we devised hybrid meetings. So originally we did face to face, but then with COVID we weren't able to do that. So we went all virtual, but now we are doing a hybrid, which I feel that that has been uh, very successful for those that maybe the transportation issues or you want to, you know, just go ahead and, and, and participate virtually. So we do offer the hybrid meetings. Um, and then with that IEP, there are supports and accommodations. We follow all of those. Uh, we will be meeting uh, either virtually or coming into the districts to do what we call transfer meetings. So we'll review the IEP, kind of talk about any concerns that you may have and make sure that it fits. Uh, and if we have to amend it, we'll do that, um, which we find that that's pretty helpful. It also kind of eases some of those anxieties for our students and as well as parents. Um, and then we also provide uh, supported study halls and those are essentially study halls where all of our students that are on IEPs to make sure that we are providing those, those supports uh, as well as some extra assistance on uh, any of your coursework uh, as well as we, we do some transitioning stuff to help prepare you for after high school. Uh, it may look a little bit different at Eastland versus Fairfield, but we do provide those study halls. The one thing I did wanna add, uh, there is one lab where it's hard, you cannot fit a study hall in, and that's our cosmetology, just because they have a related course. So when we are meeting to do some of the scheduling, uh, at the, the transfer meeting. We'll kind of go over that, but I just wanted to kind of throw that out there that a study hall might not be an option if the schedule is full. Uh, now, students on 504s, uh, we will oversee, Ashley and myself will oversee the 504s, uh, and so we will conduct the meetings, we'll do the evaluations here. Uh, we don't necessarily involve the homeschool with the 504s unless something, there's a special circumstance or something um, to that respect, then we will involve them. But we will, they'll be monitored and obviously the plans, both the IEP and the 504s are all distributed to teachers. We make sure all of accommodations, we make sure all the supports and everything um, are open and, and all of our teachers are able to view those documents. Um, and in this meeting, like I said, mm -hmm. yes, the plan is provided to all teachers. Our contact information is there. Uh, if you want to call us or email us, I don't know if it's in the folder as well, but like I said, we'll be doing some transfer meetings. So we'll probably see some of you again, either virtually or face to face. Uh, some other supports that we have are for ELL. We have Lisa Witt. She actually will go part-time before part-time at our building here at Eastland as well as at Fairfield. And she does a phenomenal job of working with our ELL students. She creates the plans and sends them out. She communicates with all the teachers as well as she will have a study hall too with some of our students that might need some of that extra assistance. Uh, and the other thing, if translation is needed, we do have that that service um, and so it's just upon request and and you know so if you need that for any of the meetings or even the new student celebration or any of that please reach out to us to make sure so we can provide that for you and then one thing that we are really proud of is we've created what's called a student learning center and that is open to all students both buildings have one and it gives an opportunity for students uh, all students needs or if they need assistance or they need to take a test um, or just some reteaching or anything it gives them that opportunity to receive that extra support we've kind of mimicked it I know Columbus State does something in that regards and so we've kind of taken that and and brought that here and it's been very successful um, and so just wanted to make sure that you know all are aware that we can provide not just for students that have IEPs, 504s, or ELL, but for other students that just might need some extra assistance on their coursework. Career technical education is so unique um, in lots of different ways, and one of the greatest ways is not only the hands-on learning, but also authentic learning, which is work-based learning. Uh, thanks, Mrs. Durkin. Thank you all for being here tonight. Um, I want to quickly congratulate all of you on the decision um, to enter Career Tech and be a part of Eastland Fairfield family. Um, we are happy to have you. 
they saved the best for last because work-based right. learning <laughs> is the best thing that you will experience at um, Eastland Fairfield. I'm going to briefly cover the highlights because it is a lot and it will not make sense to you until a year from now. Next year at this time, this will all click. You and I will be best friends. It will be fantastic. Um, Work-based learning is a program that we have at Eastland Fairfield um, that prepares you for the workforce even above and beyond uh, what you are going to do in your, in your program lab. It is not for every student. Um, these are, this opportunity is for those students who have exceptional skills, who have accelerated their junior year. Um, they are ready for a new challenge. What you're doing in your lab, you are, re you're ready to be a mentor, you are ready for the workforce, mm -hmm. you are ready to be a professional in the field. And so that's what this uh, program is for. When you are a senior, you have the opportunity to leave Eastland Fairfield after you have finished your academic classes for the day and you get to go to work. We have many students who leave after first and second period and they work all day long. Um, it is a fabulous opportunity if you want to explore your industry. It is, um, it's a program that aligns with combining education that you are learning in your lab with industry partners. So at Eastland Fairfield, we work with, I think it's close to 800 business partners um, in the community. We have Ohio Cat, we have um, Ohio Health, Fairfield Medical, um, any of the big dealerships if you're in automotive, the, the options are endless for you. Your lab instructors will connect you um, with those business partners. They will run interviews your junior year to get you employed. Sometimes they are paid internships, sometimes it's paid employment, sometimes it's an unpaid internship. No matter what path you choose, it is preparing you for your next step. It may not be employment forever, um, but every little bit helps, right? So I just hit the highlights real quick. Um, I had six work-based learning seniors with me last week at a conference, and I just want to share this with you. They were asked at the end of um, their session one word that summed up their work-based learning experience. And so I want to share those with you. Motivation, um, encouragement, confidence, prepared, um, and what was the last one? I think it was, um, it, did I say encouragement? Did I say encouragement? Empowering was my other one. I knew there was two E's. So they, they have experienced something outside of Eastland Fairfield, but it has, has, has enhanced their, their um, career and technical program here at East, Eastland Fairfield, so we're very proud of that. If you are looking to explore a work-based learning placement here at Eastland Fairfield, we do have a set of requirements. So I do want to explain this to you because you do need to pay attention to this at, in your junior year next year. Attendance is a huge one. Attendance is important. We strive for 96% 90, attendance. That's for your junior year. So as long as you maintain that 96% or higher, you're good to go. Um, we would like to see a C average in your academic classes and a B average in your lab, uh, in your lab. So those are the four big heavy hitters, no discipline. So just, you know, do what you're supposed to. <laughs> Don't get in trouble. Um, so I will be seeing you next year. I'll, you'll, you know, we'll get familiar with each other and all that fun stuff. Congratulations, I'm gonna turn it back over to Mrs. Durkin and thank you all for being here. Where does this go? Thank you, Mrs. Pontius. Like you said, we left the best for last, right? Hey, as I promised, I wanted to leave some time in our evening event here tonight to answer some questions that you have written down on index cards. So we have collected some of those. If we didn't collect your card, feel free to leave it at the table outside of this entrance that I'm pointing to. Um, and we will definitely get with you, put your email address on that as well. So I have time for just a couple of questions, maybe three or four that I will try to address um, because I think a lot did get answered during, um, during some of these presentations. But question, if a child does not have their driver's license at the beginning of the school, 
Can a pass be obtained later in school year? Mr. Gates, can you address that real quick? If a child does not have their driver's license and they get it later, is that okay as far as getting a parking permit? Yes, it's fine. Um, campus security um, has those available throughout the year. As long as you've updated all the information and we can help you with that as well, fill out the form, fill out the necessary information um, at any point when you get your license or change the car you're driving or any of that kind of stuff, we can update your information to be accurate. Thank you, Mr. Gates. Yep. Another question, is this presentation going to be available online? Absolutely. That's what Mr. Gasser is here doing right now is recording it so that we can actually put it on our website. Next question. Do we do... Like end of course testing. Oh, testing. Do we do testing at our home school or at the career center? You know, all of those end of course testing and all the tests that you have to take. Mrs. Groves. Everyone loves end of course assessments. If you are a full-time student here at Eastland Fairfield, we work with your associate school. We meet with them twice a year to, to develop a testing a plan, an assessment plan, and we will give the assessment that your home school says they need to take this test. Mm -hmm. So you will test with Eastland Fairfield. We will schedule that if you are here full-time. If you are just a lab student, which that's just a handful of students, if you only come for lab, you will take that at your home school. Oh, ACT. Same thing goes for ACT. We do administer the junior year ACT here at Eastland Fairfield. If you are a full-time student, you will take that with Eastland Fairfield. If you are just a half-day student, again, I think there's only like four or five, those students will be going back to their home school to take that assessment. Thank you. Good reminder. Okay. One last question, and again, I didn't get to all of them, but I will address them in some of our FAQs on our website along with this recording. Last question, what school do students go to in order to get their uniforms? And how much are the uniforms? The May 5th new student celebration that you should have received information about is where you'll get more information about their uniforms. And that is the evening that you do attend on the campus that your program is located, okay? And you'll get more information that night along with an order sheet and you it's a there's a school uniform store that is being built out and the prices will be available at that time okay mrs griffin if you can go to the next slide let me wrap it up here guys just with some next steps again i very much appreciate you being here tonight because i think this is just valuable information that all of you had probably I keep using the word, swir word swirling in your head, but probably lots of questions that you all have had. So hopefully, hopefully this was helpful in answering some of those. So Parent Portal, a lot of you have been calling and asking about, hey, I know my acceptance is conditional because I have to fill out these required Parent Portal forms. And you're right. And we had hope to have those available so that you can get them done because we'd like to have them done before the May 5th orient. Uh, new student celebration. There has been a delay with that, and you're going to get communication about getting when that's available as soon as we can get um, all the students enrolled and get the system going. So we apologize for that inconvenience. You should have received an email about that explaining. So as soon as we have that available, you'll get another email, okay? Make sure that you're checking frequently your email accounts your students' email accounts, because typically when we do communicate, we're communicating both to the student and the parent. So please check those accounts frequently. Um, another next step is please attend the May 5th New Student Celebration. That is an evening for you to be here on campus, either at Eastland or Fairfield. Meet the teachers, get inside the labs, talk about uniforms, all of that good stuff. Okay, next slide, please. And I think I already mentioned, just make sure that you're checking your email accounts frequently because there will be several touch points throughout the summer months and there will be important information in there, okay? Again, appreciate you being here tonight. Sorry, it went a little longer than the hour as promised, but I hopefully, hopefully you received a lot of good information that's gonna make your students successful and the transition as seamless as possible.